Okay, so I haven't recorded anything in a little while. I kind of hit a hard point in my life, and I just didn't have the time to do it anymore, but I decided to start playing Diablo 3 again. I've been really enjoying, uh, this is actually Season 6, believe it or not. Um, I posted, shoot, a couple of years ago about when the public test realm for the first one was starting, right before the first season kicked off. And I was trying to get a bunch of my friends into it, but they either play on console, or if they are playing on PC, they're playing Warcraft, which is kind of lame, <laughs> or they're playing Dota. But anyways, this is my sorceress I got going on right now. Um, I'm trying to get the, the full Tal Rasha set. Um, I got the pants and the regular armor, and I believe I have another piece here. And... Da -da 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 -da. Nifflers, Tyrael's Might, yeah, I have the, the helmet as well, so, all together, this is really cool, because as you can see, damaging enemies with the arcane, cold, fire, or lightning will cause a meteor of the same type, and basically every 8 seconds when the cooldown's done, it fires off another one. Now, I'm playing on Torment 4 now that I've acquired some of this armor, but I'm also using this Firebird set. It is really cool. When you die, a meteor falls from the sky and revives you. So if you can live for another 60 seconds, you don't die, which is amazing. I mean, this gear with a hardcore character would be tits. I mean, it would be really, really good to acquire. But if I can get a four set of it, all my fire damage, you know, it gets way amplified by 3,000%, just like this tall Rasha's. If I can get the full six set, then all of my attacks are increased by 750% for eight seconds, and they all stack. So, it's really, really potent. And I was reading up, um, currently I'm using this Hydra, the Frost Nova, and then I'm turning on my Familiars and my Storm, and with these armors right now, I'm using uh, certain skill runes form that give me my arcane costs are less, and then uh, with my familiar, it basically gives me arcane power as well. So as I'm running around with my disintegration beam, as you can see, I literally lose like zero arcane power. So you can just run it for indefinitely, which is amazing. That's a, a really good feature of it. But uh, I'm going to hop into one of these greater rifts, and I'm doing them on level 20, so... Let's see how it goes. I could probably afford to do a empowered one. Uh, shoot, for recording purposes, let's do it. I've got 2.4 million, cost 2.28. I've done level 20 before, so let's see if I get lucky with some good enemy drops. So as you can see, those meteors are automatically falling. Drop my hider in there. I'm going to start using the Arkham after this, so we'll do a, a little test with it. I'll, I'll record another one after this rift to, to highlight that special power, but this hider really helps. He slows stuff down, and you can just drop him right into the mix. Here's some power. I probably should have saved that for when I found a, a legendary or elite character. Or legendary, I mean, uh, champion, actually, is what they're called, the gold one. Because with this power amplified right now, I'm just gonna be beast mode for a second. So as you can see at the, the top right, it shows your rift difficulty. And so basically, the rifts work um, when you level up your rifts by completing one within the timer, you can select the next level and it amplifies the difficulty by different torment levels. So the higher your torment levels, the better stuff you get at the end. This is where I got most of my Tal Rasha set, is just from randomly doing the rift over and over and over and grinding it. So you can see I'm just gonna drop Hydra right in there. And you might see that Phoenix armor, there it is. So as you can see, I didn't die there, even though I probably should have. I did die there though. I ran right back into it. I, I should have came back right down to here. As you can see, that arcane damage, there's an amulet that negates it. Um, I have it with my non-seasonal character, but since I am playing seasonal right now, everything's amplified difficulty-wise. 
beat the hell out of that frost is what killed me that first time. So with the sorceress, I just recommend using this disintegration beam. It's it's really good. It drops a, a lot of damage very quickly. And if you're using your the storm armor and the familiar, you don't run out of power for it, so you can just keep amplifying it. And there's that meteor again for the with the armor set. It's been very, very handy. Since I got that armor, I've been able to crank it from Torment 2 all the way to Torment 4. So difficulty level has increased tremendously, and I'm still doing okay. As you can see, those champions and elites that uh, Frozen Pulse, that's a son of a bitch. I mean, there's a couple things you can do just basically running out of it. And if they get close to me, I, I freeze them. I do have my... Uh, my passive set for when they get close to me, I deal more damage. And then, I believe there's something else that when they're frozen, they receive more damage, so... Using the Hydra works good for that. And then using, of course, the Frost Nova itself does the instant freezing. And if they're close to you when you freeze them, which they'll have to be to use the Frost Nova, you just start rocking them. See that damage increase right there? Start dropping some meteors and stuff on them too with this Paul Rasha set. So, a lot of my friends they play World of Warcraft for the you know the open world stuff. I mean that's cool, the exploring stuff. But there's so many enemy type combinations and things. This game always feels fresh, and you can always just pick up a new class and start a, a different play type. Like, I have a, a very high-level Witch Doctor who runs on Torment 4, Torment 5 difficulty. And he's really fun to play with. I mean, you run around with friggin' all kinds of familiars and stuff. I'll, I'll show him to you as well. This is just uh, what I've been playing with here the last couple days. So I, I was just going to highlight a little bit. Um, techniques and stuff for this class is I run with the Templar. He's more of a get right in their faces and cause some stuns. As you can see, there's that ice ball just dropped in there and <laughs> rocked him. So as soon as you can get the Tal Rasha set, the better. So far, it's it's one of the sets that I really enjoy, just for the sheer fact of damage dealing. See right there, those two meteors alone just ended that guy. And these little guys that drop shields onto the other enemies are kind of a pain. I tend to go for them first. And then concentrate on the, the other guys actually trying to get in close and deal damage. And if you turn your skills right, like my disintegration beam right now is, uh... And it was, I believe it actually it's set to slow them, so... On top of my freezing and everything with my hydras, I'm dropping a little more damage with the actual slowdown of the beam itself. So most enemies, they really don't get close enough to really affect me. But when they do, I deal extra damage and freezing, so it's kind of like a failsafe with the class. And you can see I'm still keeping uh, that little purple bar on the right. I'm sure you guys, if you're watching this by now, you know how the Diablo rifts are working. But for anyone who hasn't really, uh, my brother plays on console and stuff, but he hasn't really, you know, tried the expansion out. So he's, he's played through the normal game, but just hasn't played any of the expansion content with the rifts and all the, in my opinion, the, what makes Diablo 3 such a beast. It's a really lengthy game. And when you get into the grind of it, if you enjoy the grind of it, then you'll get tons and tons of fun out of this game. I have a lot of people that have the PCs to run it, but they're just not really willing to play it. So we got some elites coming up here on our left. We'll clear the path, drop our Hydra up in there. That'll help keep them at bay a little bit. Still waiting. So they can, they can pull their armor back, but <laughs> as you can see, the, the disintegration beam, if you get some, some armor and things that affect its damage type, then, I mean, even just like a 10% boost on it, it makes it incredibly powerful. So out of all the, the skills attack-wise the sorcerer has, this is by far one of the most devastating attacks. 
see when he got close, I just used my Frost Nova and slowed him down again. And then dropping all these lovely purples for us. Let me drop this real quick. I know it takes a little time, but it's worth it. As you can see our bar, I'm still ahead of the clock. Whoop. Let's see if I can get out of this situation. And I am using uh, the Electrocute, because when they wall up like that, it actually goes through the wall, as you can see there. So the wall may stop my beam from affecting these guys, but it's not going to affect my Electrocute damage from getting to them. Drop a Hydra right in the face. It'll give me some extra extra protection, I should say. That was actually close. I thought my, my Phoenix was going to have to save my ass there again. So all in all, I've, I've actually never started a hardcore character. I just, I mean, I can understand the challenge, and you get a lot of the cooler gear that way. But, you know, to tell the truth, when you die and you lose a character that you have, you know, 30 plus hours in, it's just, it makes you kind of not want to play a game anymore, so... I always stick with the, the regular characters, non-hardcores. Non it's hardcore enough for me. I can always crank the difficulty and make it ridiculous hard on myself if I want to. So, that's one of those things too where it's... I enjoy this game for the sheer fact that if you play it enough and level your characters and get your gear rolling, that's really when you can turn up your tournament levels. Is you'll get to tournament one after you get to your max level character. And then basically from there, it's all about the gear you collect. Like this tall Rasha said I just picked up. It's enabled me to go up two more tournament levels, so it's made the game increasingly good. So you can see these guys have, you know, 33 million for a normal guy. Uh, this Rift Guardian popping out, he's gonna have anywhere from like 500 million to I've almost had one at, at almost a billion. There's a special one you get an achievement for. One of the developers of the game actually has a one of the Rift Guardians named after him. But he has almost a billion HP, so he's real fun to battle just because it's a, a nice length to it. You can see those meteors, my god. And especially if they're dropping arcane damage. His arcane damage affects so many of these guys so, like, a lot more, like, than the fire or the ice. I, in my opinion, arcane damage is the one to crank. It seems to affect a, a lot more variety of enemy types. And it seems to do a hell of a lot more damage than a regular fire or anything. I know the fire can increase that, the burn chance, which is really cool. When you ignite the enemies like that phoenix armor. If I get enough pieces for that and actually start using fire effectively, it could be really cool. There's a skill set for this disintegration beam where you can change it to fire type damage, so I'm sure in combination it could get really powerful. There we go. So as you can see, the sorcerer is kind of a, a clean sweep type of person. Hold in the back, slow the enemy as much as you can. Uh, that's why I like the Templar. He gets right up in there and, and stops him from getting close to you. If they do happen to get through him though, then you can always rely on your freeze abilities. And you can always drop that Hydra in there. So as long as we stay in the back a little bit, we can keep him at bay and do a lot of damage still. These guys are trying to drop that electric pulse on me. I've got some gear that negates the lightning damage though, so... All the shock and stuff that they're dropping, I'm really not too afraid of. Uh, the arcane beacons really hurt, and that frozen pulse. It causes a, a lot of damage on higher difficulties. <laughs> See that freeze damage just rock someone, man. It's amazingly powerful. 
so on these rifts I tend to just kind of keep going as, as fast as I can. Um, I know exploring the whole level is important because you can find more elite and champion monsters that way. But to tell the truth, if you just keep moving on through the rift, you're going to run into them as well. Oh, these little bugs are, are really strong at higher difficulties. And I also recommend uh, a lot of life per hit items with the sorcerer. I'll show you the sword I'm using. I mean, this big hulking thing, it does like 15,000 something life per hit on its own. And then you get a socket going and you throw a good amethyst in there. Like, I only have an Imperial Amethyst, but it's given me 16,000 on, on top of what it's already given me. So these bugs being in here, I'm going to try to knock them out as soon as I can. Because those, as soon as their little babies hit you, they're, they drop a lot of damage. Basically all the other enemies in this area so far are real nice and friendly. Just reason to get my Hydra up in there. You can see those meteors are a lot of damage. And there's that Phoenix saving my ass again. And they toasted me. But that's okay. I mean that's our, our second time so it's only going to be a timer of 5 seconds. Um, I was running this earlier without dying but... I did turn on the Empowered Rift, so these guys are going to be a little tougher when it comes to uh, what abilities they do have and do drop. There we go. So as you can see, I'm still well above the timer. And as long as I, I can get the Rift Guardian to drop here soon and kill him before that timer, then I'll get a chance to upgrade my gems four times. Tell the truth, I don't think it's going to happen, actually. So that's going to be a bummer if I wasted my, my two million on it. Come on, Rift Guardian, I know you want to drop. There he is. So I've got like 40 seconds to get down to Stone Stinger here. Let's see if I can do it. So far, it, it looks like I'm, I'm going to be able to have a good chance at it. I'm just going to concentrate on him and not move. You can see he has 700 million health, so... Oh my god. Nope. And that's it. By the time I revive, I'm out. But all in all, pretty good run. I, uh, I just wanted to kind of show you guys what the rifts are all about and everything. As you can see, the timer expired. I'm still going to kill this guy, and I'll show you what happened. Uh, I need healing. I'm not going to be able to upgrade my gems this go round, but that's all right. It's not like coming across money is hard or anything. A lot of these rifts still drop you, you know, seventy thousand to almost a hundred thousand. There we go. And he still drops a lot of cool stuff, so... There's another one of the, the legendary gems. But as you can see, since I ran out of time, I'm not going to be able to upgrade them. But that's okay, we got, uh... At 16,000 Thorin's damage, so... That's not too bad. I'm happy with that run. And as you can see, we already got 300,000 more out of that run. 100 Blood Shards. We're going to be able to buy some armor with that and hopefully get more set pieces that way. would be really, really nice to see. And with this guy being a, a seasonal character, all this stash here, when it rolls over, you get to keep your character, and then they mail all this item to you. So you can go through with your non-seasonal, and you can kind of pick and choose what you want to toss, what you want to keep. Like this legendary tabs for anything under level 70. So if I start another seasonal character, as they're leveling, I'm going to be able to use all these items for them. And then this is all 70 plus. Uh, a lot of good items in here. Uh, a lot of things that, you know, I, I expected would be a little harder to get. This one was actually just randomly dropped for me. It's cool for the grasp of the dead damage. And if you're running the seasonal, you know you'll have to do a, 
certain the set armors have their own unique challenges and things behind them. So for example with my Witch Doctor I had the Zunamasa set which it, you unlock as you play through the season which is a really cool feature. It's something fresh to have a brand new character anyways but as you level and do different things you'll acquire really cool stuff and special set. So as you can see this sword right here is really good. I actually picked it up with my Witch Doctor and it works great for my sorcerer so I've been using it. But it has a chance to freeze on hit, which is a big plus. A great intelligence boost. And then that life per hit. I mean, 25,000 plus the 16,000 from Jim. I mean, you can just sit there and boost on things, and you hardly die. And this is actually pretty cool. It drops a poison nova. But I liked it because it had that life per hit. And then it did not only lightning skills, but some more fire damage taken. So I don't know if that 8% more fire damage taken... I think that's a negative effect actually. I've actually never seen, you know, a set item that has something weird like that that is actually bad for you to have, but it's not bad. I mean, a lot of enemies don't use fire too much. Uh, the molten stuff really does use a lot. But I'm going to try to get the this firebird set and I'm also going to try my best to get the rest of the Zunamasa, uh some boots. So let's go ahead down to Kaldala after we Your Vala is yep, check in. So we got some 762,000 and we also got some XP out of it. So win-win, got another Paragon level. I'm dropping in a resist all right now. Uh, my core, I'm using movement speed because I like to run a little faster. In general, it helps get out of the frost range and all that stuff. Uh, critical hit damage. And then defense, resist all, of course. And then I like life on hit, so I'm just pumping more into that. But let's see what Kadala gives you us. Like you could use a new item of, uh, okay, boots. Use Don't forget, luck always changes. Oh, we didn't get nothing special, so we'll go ahead and thrash that. And I'm going to actually probably get this wrapped up and make a video for you real quick. Oops. So there's some content I haven't posted in, I think, almost over a month now. So I just had to get back into the rhythm of it. And I've been playing Diablo 3 a lot. So thank you guys for, you know, stopping in and stopping by and enjoying all the, the coolness with me. And if you guys want to play, uh, you can leave your username down there and I can add you to my battle net. I, I don't mind adding friends. I mean, then you can see what I'm playing and shoot jump into my games would be really fun if I had enough people playing I might just change this from private to open so hope you guys have a good day and I'll talk to you later